perhaps you don't need to be a scientist to understand science. Welcome to Cranium vs Skull. Why is early prenatal diagnosis important? What's gene screening? And is this dude a feminist? You've got much more problems with your hair than me. You put yeah, like that and like actually, that yes. and like that. But it, you know, it's, it's warm. Winter's coming. I got a hat. Do you? Yeah, obviously. Is that enough? Sitting in for cranium, Dr. Francois Jacquemart, dash obstetrician, dash gynecologist. And with the skulls today, we have Margot Biard, actor. So hi, Francois. Hi, Margot. What are we going to talk about today? It's up to you. Up to me, really. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! The cranium has just blown the skull's mind! I'm an OBGYN. What is that? An OBGYN. Yeah. That's a doctor who is obstetrician, mm -hmm. OB, and gynecologist. Okay. GYN. In France, there are 800,000 deliveries a year. Mm-hmm. What is then a delivery? What do you mean delivery, by delivery? Delivery, delivery. Woman who gave birth. Okay. Who gave I birth. see, right. And then all those women need prenatal care. Mm -hmm. And there are doctors, obstetrician, OBGYN, there are midwives, and then there are different levels of care mm -hmm. from the most of the women have a normal pregnancy, deliver a normal baby without any problem, and some of the women are identify some more having some risk. It could be some risk of I don't know hypertension, uh, mm -hmm. some risk of delivering a small baby, some risk of premature delivery, a lot of disease. And then uh, there are a lot of doctors who are speciali specialized in mm. prenatal care in, and in high-risk pregnancies, and I'm one of those. Okay. And how do you feel about that? Oh, she's got him up against the ropes with that one. I've been practicing that for 25 years, so okay. I think that... Uh, so you're used to... Uh, I'm used to, to deal uh, with high-risk pregnancies. What are designer babies? We can imagine that there would be some computers and we would be able to... I want a baby free of that disease, free of that other disease, something like that. So will we uh, be able to, yeah, I think to that erase we will. every disease? Just with computers? To, to decrease. To decrease, oh, there are lots of okay. things behind the computer, but to decrease the burden of a lot of congenital disease, mm -hmm. yes, probably. But we're far from that. Sure. For example, there's a very sad disease which name is cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. And having cystic fibrosis gives you lung insufficiency. Lung. Usually, people with huge cystic fibrosis will die before the age of 20. Each of their two parents had half of the gene. On chromosome 7 is the gene of cystic fibrosis. Okay, what is cystic fibrosis? Ding, ding, ding! There goes the bell! How is she going to recover from this one? I don't think she heard the bell. She's been running her mouth so much that all other sounds have vanished. And do you like what you do? Is it? Um... I think that what what can be more important than the helping women to give birth? Uh, I saw this afternoon a woman who that was initially a normal pregnancy, and. Her doctor told her last week your baby could have a congenital heart disease. The so heart, the you mean the pain? The heart, the heart. What is the heart? You don't know what is the heart. No. You don't have any heart. The heart. Oh, the heart. Okay, sorry. Oh, yeah, he's pulling out the big one. Blah, blah, blah. No zipper. Just flopped it right out there. At the beginning, when I was a student, I think I was 
interest about the delivery and about the pregnancy. Why is that? Because that's magic. Uh, from from nothing, from one cell, you get a whole pe- a, a whole person. It's miraculous, also. So the cause you're you're doing is is beautiful. It's a it's a feminist job, right? Uh-huh. What you do, you you're like saving lives. You're helping women. That's do you feel a, like a feminist? That's a humanist job. Yeah. More than yeah, more of the doctors I mean, yeah, get. Uh, more than feminists. Uh, but do you feel a like humanist. a feminist? Leave it up to the skulls to act like big brains. I wouldn't be uh, specialized in obstetrics and gynecology if I wouldn't be very attentive of a, a lot of issues concerning the woman, their well-being, their health, the the place they need to have in the society, uh, the, the care they need, the respect that they need. Uh, obviously, I'm a feminist. The first man was a gremlin. That's why Eve ran away to the apple. <laughs> well, Eve stole his rib cage and made herself. Eve was only taking a rib back. <laughs> it's like, anyway, I don't know, I actually feel lucky to be a woman in France, in Europe. Because I feel yeah, protected, yeah. and I, you know, and actually, I just saw that this Af- Afghan girl, um, you know, she was this Instagram girl. She was like really popular, and she got shot in the street yeah. because she was, yeah. uh, well, dressing in a provocative way. But she was just not. She was not harming anybody. She was just being herself. Well, she would wear, you know, well, just like a top, like me, you know. But then it's not. It's not. Um, it's not allowed. You are in a very small part of the world where the rights of women, yeah. even if there's some many things to improve, are much better than yeah, absolutely. in other countries. In that way, I am a feminist. Me too. I'm heading a unit at the American Hospital of Prenatal Diagnosis. Mm-hmm. So today I had some women who had ultrasound, and then uh, they were told that the baby had uh, some risk of having a disease. Okay. Uh, one baby had an enlarged neck. Oh, I see. Some other baby. So they had haven't got space to, to, yeah, to breathe. Yeah, large neck and. Yeah, okay. just behind the neck. And then I needed to practice some sampling. That means I took a needle and put the needle in the, through the abdominal wall and just put some cells from the placenta or from the amniotic fluid to know if the baby had Down syndrome or another chromosomal anomaly or infection. Okay. I practiced very long scan and told her that the baby had indeed a congenital heart disease, mm-hmm. that I must practice an amniocentesis to know if the baby has any other abnormality, I mean chromosomal anomaly. And then after that, I explained what will happen. I mean, that baby will have surgery after birth. So we are going to take care of the mother, to organize the delivery, to organize the surgery after birth. That will be maybe at one or two days of life. The baby will need to have her surgery. The risk of that surgery is very low, maybe less than 1%. And after that, the heart will be repaired. And then the baby will have a normal life. But if you don't identify that Prenatally, the result could be the baby could die, or the result could be far worse. So that's very important to identify. What is worse than death? How dare you not make sense? And then I had to follow up some pregnancies, and then I had to check uh, the fetal growth, being confident that the baby is growing normally, and after that, I spent one year in traffic jams coming to see you. 
one hour. One hour is better than one year, but it, one year. it for <laughs> me, I felt that was one year. Yeah, sure, I get the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to develop a hospital based, and then we're going to add a bit of paprika and cayenne. <laughs> the aim of prenatal care is to identify most early that we can high risk pregnancies and for the five or ten percent of women where there's a doubt then we're going to apply a, a more careful follow-up and see them more mm -hmm. frequently and make more scans and just okay. to ensure that everything is going well. So we must identify, prevent and organize. That's what I'm doing every day. Just imagine we are the two parents. Yeah. You get on one of your chromosome seven, half of the gene. And I get on one of my chromosome seven, half of the gene. If we combine that, there will be one out of four, I mean 25% of cases, where the baby will receive the two halves of the gene. He will be affected by cystic fibrosis. What we could do, and what is quite easy to do, is to make carrier screening. Carrier screening, that means you test the parents before they just decide to have children. Oh, that's a good and idea. And you identify. I think I'll do that from, now. Yeah, you can. <gasps> so how do you, um, do you go and see a general doctor? In France, so far, that is forbidden. Oh, is it? In France, we have laws of bioethics. And the last advice about the National Council of Bioethics, and he told that we should begin some pilot studies so we, we, we will be able to think about implementation of the screening among the general French population. Okay, so they're going to do that in the future? Yeah. Why was it forbidden? Is that a reason? First, it's difficult to implement that in a huge population like France. Second thing, when we speak about any gene screening, we always must avoid a lot of things. Discrimination and but is it discrimination to, if you, <laughs> to if find you out you've got a problem? Yeah. Maybe. What if, for example, all those data are in the hands of your personal medical insurance and then mm -hmm. they don't want to reimburse everything because they know that you have that? So okay. we always need to think about discrimination, about the the identification of those disease. Oh. But why do they agree now? Because they're going to do it now because, in the future. Because people want to know before the conception mm -hmm. instead of knowing after the delivery of sure. a baby with a disease. Every time you speak about genetic disease, prevention of genetic disease, screening of genetic disease. In the world population, there will be always people who will tell you, take care of the risk of elimination, eliminate by abortion. Are you against it? Are you no, I'm pro, but people are not ready for that. And that's always like that. And is France not ready for that, or is everyone not ready? I think that uh, uh, it depends on the um, situation if every country, in every country they are different. For example, if you look in Ireland, in Ireland they just are on the beginning of thinking of allowing abortion at the beginning of pregnancy. That was forbidden. In the US you can see people who want to allow abortion and the right for the woman to to decide what to do and the people who don't want. The science is evolving, I can say that, mm -hmm. very rapidly. As far as something 
can be done, that doesn't mean that that should be done. Maybe you heard about CRISPR-Cas9. You don't know CRISPR-Cas9. Have you ever heard of CRISPR-Cas9? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to go no. I'm going to go no. I'm going to go yes, though. That tool is able to identify some genes in the genome, I mean the DNA, and you can cut, pluck, pluck, and replace. So it's those, it's particular scissors. They're not just simple yeah, scissors. Yeah, that mean, like... yeah, that particular scissors. That means that we will be able to manipulate the human genome. We're not so far. So that's, yeah, we're that's not... against nature, isn't it? Yeah, we're not so, uh, And what do you think about that? We're not so far, and we must be very careful That's about true. all those problems. There's a lot of surgery at the moment, so people... Yeah. I don't know if it's... It's kind of related. Like, people are trying to change their faces completely, yeah. and people are not happy with what nature yeah, gave they, them. Yeah, they think that they can change their the, the features, yeah. they think they can change their yeah. sex, their gender. Mm -hmm. uh, that That's true. is uh, particularly stupid. Yeah and harmful. Can they no. ask for it now? If I want a girl, can I, yeah, you can can. I have a girl? Yeah, no, you can already. Not, he, not in France. Uh, in the US? In or? China, or yeah. where you can. Uh, yeah. And, and, because in China, apparently, when you have a girl, it's, there are too many girls. Uh, and What happens in China that you have a huge excess of male people? And yeah. everyone they used to knows, kill little girls. Yeah, and uh, everyone knows that when the country... Uh, has a huge excess of male people yeah. they're getting to make war. <laughs> That's true. But it's contradictory because you just said in China there are too many males, but like a hundred or fifty years ago, like they used to kill girls when yeah, you know, when yeah. why? Why is that? Why wouldn't they kill boys? Because there weren't enough girls. So why would they kill girls? Have you ever seen something like this by five? <laughs> I don't know, that's, uh, you know Maybe they the wanted to, where, where, to prepare war. Where? That's what this show is missing. We've got theoretical physicists, we've got theoretical everything, but no conspiracy theorists. They were allowed only to have one children, mm. and then they thought that having a boy would be would be more comfortable for them. It's maybe that maybe uh, the boy will supply. And also, well, the boy them, carries the family name. In most countries, having the value of a boy for mm, much high. people is... <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much, Francois. It was a pleasure to have you. Join us next time. Join us next time. For another episode. For another episode. Of... Of... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hurt, hurt my hurt, heart. Heart, heart, hurt, 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 heart, hurt, <laughs> uh, that's very difficult. Cranium